Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be doing something a touch different. I received in the mail uh, a package of tinsels from Ralph. He's out of Saskatchewan. He wanted me to take a look at some of these materials and give my opinion on them. So here it is. It's the glitter thread. This comes from Dollarama. And uh, I'll just go over some of the pros and the cons with this. So Obviously, it's $1.50 for eight spools. That comes out to about $0.19 cents a spool plus tax. So, I mean, price-wise, you can't really beat that. It's got a nice color selection, and um, it's it's not a bad material. It's uh, thin and easy to work with, and you can blend the colors fairly easily. And, and it's easy to reinforce with a little bit of UV cement to give it a bit more durability. So... Some of the things that I didn't like about this or were that it's a little bit weak. It's easy to pull apart. It's a three-strand material. It's a little bit of uh, mylar tinsel reinforced with two small monofilaments. Um, overall, it's pretty good, though. It's uh, hard to find the ends on this when you want to start the material, and there's no slit for uh, storing the thread. And I found a way around that. It's just to add a... Uh, spool minder from a UTC spool that I've got uh, saved from a previous uh, spool of thread. I found this material is good for ribbing on nymphs and uh, uh, chronomids and paragons, and it's also good if you want to create tinsel bodies out of the uh, uh, for chronomids or paragons or nymphs as also. So we're going to be tying a fly from this material. This is a variation of Phil Rowley's uh, chromie. So we're going to call this one the glitter chromie. I won't go into a detailed discussion on this one. I'll put a link in the info cards and in the description. You can have a look at the chromie I did back a little while ago, and you can get all the information there. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, and I'll get your name entered into the next draw for some of the flies we tie on the channel here, fly tying materials, stickers, and whatever other goodies we can rustle up. All right, let's have a look at the material list and get started. So let's get a fresh hook into the vise. So today we're going to be tying on a Mustad C53S. And this is a 3XL curved shank hook. You can also do this on a shorter shanked curve. Um, but just for demonstration, we're going to be using this one. And we're going to be using a 2.8 millimeter black nickel brass bead here. You can just go ahead and put the bead on the hook and put in the jaws of the vise. We're going to be using some 70D black thread or an A-dot. I'm just going to push that bead back and I'm going to wrap on just behind the eye, a couple wraps, and clip the tag end of the thread. Then we're going to take a small piece of Stillwater Midge Gill or some type of white trilobal yarn. I'm just going to take one strand of that. We're going to tie that in uh, right at the eye. And you don't want this to protrude too far over. We can come back and trim this up later. Just need a few wraps. Trim that down. You don't want to build up any bulk here. You want to try and keep that as thin as possible because we're going to slide the bead over top. Just do a quick whip finish towards the back of the hook. Clip that off. You don't have to be too concerned about uh, durability at this point because we're coming right back in. We're going to tie over top of that uh, tie-in point. And then we're just going to take our thread down just over the little past the hook point and then back up just to where that bump in our uh, where we tied in our midge gill is going to be. You can add a half hitch here if you want just to make sure that that thread doesn't get bumped off. Um, we're just going to give that a bit of a spin to take out some of the twist in the thread. Now we're going to go ahead and grab a couple pieces of tinsel. We're going to start off with our red. And we're just going to take a small length, maybe 10 to 12 inches. 
and we're going to fold that in half and tie it in so we've got two strands. You can cut that at the loop if you like. Just give that a few wraps to secure it along the side of the hook shank. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our silver. Take a little bit more for the silver just because we've got a little bit more material that we'll need on the fly for the silver color. So again, we'll uh, fold that over so we've got two strands. You can do this with one, but it's easier if you have two or three strands. Helps just kind of cover up that body a little bit quicker and you have uh, less potential for gaps. So we're just going to go ahead. We tied that in. We're going to wind it down just past the hook point and we're going to separate out the silver and the red. We're going to take our thread back up in behind the bead. You can kind of see trying to keep that body as thin as possible and as uh, consistent as possible. Let a half hitch here just to make sure we don't bump off the thread as we're winding up our material. So now we're going to put on a little bit of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. This will just help keep the uh, tinsel in place. And uh, we've got a little bit too much there, so you can just take your finger and dab it on there just to help it get soaked into the threads and distribute it a little bit better. So now we're going to take the two strands of the silver tinsel and we're going to wrap. And we're just going to try and make sure that we don't have too much of uh, any spaces in between. If there is a little bit of space in between some of your wraps, it's not uh, too big of a concern. It just kind of helps uh, create an overall uh, modeled look to the fly. So we spun that up right behind the bead and we'll just take our thread and we'll catch it right there. And just like to make sure we go in behind the bead and in f or in behind the uh, material and in front of it just so that it's locked in place. And we'll cut that off as short as we can. And then next we're going to grab the two strands of the red tinsel that we have here. And we're just going to wind that back a little bit towards the bend of the hook. And this is just going to create a little bit of a, a butt on the fly. So this is a just kind of represents some of the hemoglobin that you can see in the fly. And then we're going to carefully wrap up uh, six to seven ribs on this fly. And these longer hook shanks make it a little bit easier to get in those extra wraps. If you're using a shorter shanked hook like a C49S, you might want to just go down to a single strand of the glitter thread just to make it a little bit easier not to fill in the entire uh, body with uh, red ribs. So we'll clip that off after we've tied it. And now we're going to go ahead, we're going to take a little bit of uh, UV resin. We're going to use a little bit of the bone dry here. And we're just going to lightly cover the uh, body here. And this will give it a bit of reinforcement. As I said before in the intro, the uh, material is a little bit thin, so you want to definitely reinforce it with something. We'll just go ahead and uh, make sure we got that distributed evenly. And once we do that, we'll take a UV light and we'll give that a zap. Now when I use my UV light, I like to start the light away about six inches from the fly and then gradually come in. Uh, just so you don't overheat the materials. Uh, some materials are a little bit more sensitive to heat, and I have a feeling this might be one of them. So you'll want to start your light a little bit further away. You can also use a hard as nails, and that'll work well for this. So for a collar, we're going to use either uh, like a, a diamond dub, like we're using here. This is the bronze olive, my favorite color of diamond dub. Or you can go with a traditional... Uh, peacock curl. Um, this fly is good either way. I kind of like using the synthetics for this fly in particular. So you just dub that on your thread and uh, give it a couple turns. Give a double whip finish here just to make sure that that fly is going to be secure. And we'll trim that off. And all we have left to do on this fly is just to trim up a little bit of that shag a little bit. So we're going to pull everything forward. We're going to trim up the gills on the fly. We want it about the same length as the eye or a little bit longer. And I'm going to get rid of a few of the 
really long uh, fibers in the collar here. You might even want to trim it up a little bit tighter than what I've done here. But as you fish that, those are going to get pulled out a little bit more. And just finally, I like to just push up those gills just to give a little bit more access to the eye. It's uh, You don't really have to do that. As long as you've got access, easy access to the eye, you should be good. And uh, if you've got a um, a bodkin or your whip finish tool, you can just stick it through the eye and make sure it works okay. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see the original, don't forget to click in the description or the info cards. Hey, Fly Tires. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.